good evening i was having some technical troubles uh, anyway thank you for joining am i audible to everybody uh, i guess so so yes. my yes. okay i'm still admitting people i was waiting so that everybody comes in anyway <clears throat> so basically i'll uh, speak mostly in english uh, uh, is there anybody here who doesn't exactly understand bengali uh, anyone ankit i know anybody else yeah. okay so so for ankit i am speaking in english uh, at times if i ever speak in bengali and i uh, forget that i'm speaking bengali please tell me so basically <clears throat> uh, i basically wanted to start this course which because uh, you know that it's uh, lockdown is going on and i really have nothing to do and for a long time i have promised to a lot of people that i will be teaching this course uh, let me introduce most of uh, to most of you who i am basically uh, most of the people whom i see here are from a institute i used to previously teach in it's called delight physics lab uh, i used to teach experimental physics there uh, many more are there who are friends of them i believe uh, currently 70 people enrolled and here i find at least 48 people so that's good enough uh, ankit is from iser uh, he is a uh, he is a friend of mine and there are some other friends of mine here i can see onuruddho who used to teach with me in delight i see oritro and a few more okay i cannot really uh, deep pro is here so let me start firstly i want to say that this entire course will basically be a kind of internship type where uh, i will be teaching you in some discrete uh, say uh, lectures i won't really say lectures they are more like discussions because i won't be teaching in a formal way where i'll be deriving everything or it will be more like revealing the subject to you uh, and uh, trying to make you fall in love with it and uh, the dates will not be fixed like in internship you know that today it will be at 5:30 it will not be like that i'm still having to admit anyway so uh, you will see how the course goes i will approximately take about 20 to 20, 25 classes they will be about 1 hour something ankit is asking would you record uh, currently i have actually allowed a person to record oyan are you here not oyan sorry whom did i ask to record i forgot orjun i think orjun okay 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 he is recording so uh, currently i'm recording so if my if i change my mind later sometimes i'll tell so anyway the intro is basically divided into two parts today i'll discuss the absolute uh, overview of the subject without going into any technical details i'll actually try not to use any mathematical term today not even one so if i do use uh, please tell me i'll uh, actually explain myself and in the next intro class i will try to explain all the technical details which i avoided today in this two intro classes i will give you a brief overview of whatever is going to come today the overview will basically be about the qualitative qualitative understanding of the subject and the next intro class which i suppose may be held on sunday uh, it will be more like a, a, a quantitative intro uh, whereby you will be told what things you will need to uh, what are the prerequisites for taking this course although i have actually said that the prerequisite is nothing much just basic uh, uh, basic understanding of science however there will be a few things which you will need to remember uh, i'll i'll tell tell them on the next day i cannot use any mathematical term today so anyway so let me start is there anything anybody wants to ask before i start it's okay you can ask me anything okay so basically today i am presenting next day i'll be actually teaching so i'll have a i'll, I'll have a board type of thing so i am not very good at slides you can understand that today so anyway so today i am presenting let me start okay so the very basic thing which i want to tell you is that uh, there are a few things which this course is not uh, i really don't want to tell you what this course is about you will find that out but i have got a few mails from a few people who firstly thought that this is a uh, certificate course firstly it is not i i am just a i am just a enthusiastic person just like you are i'm trying to spread the subject as much as in the as possible in the society so this is just a this is just a just a normal kind of you can say friendly discussion okay so first it's an, it's not a certificate course nothing like that it is not really pre recorded i'll be taking every live class you can record that you can ask me before you record 
and it will not be purely mathematical uh, uh, many of you might have known this nonlinear dynamics thing as a mathematical uh, subject it basically is i'm not get going in there today however my course will not be mathematical it, uh, the, in the sense that it will not really uh, derive uh, every mathematical uh, background which i would need to explain so there will be some things which i will consider as uh, taken for granted and it, i will mention you references which you can later look on okay so in this way i'll be I, i'll be able to skip a lot of things which i myself don't know and uh, and i guess the boredom will not come in uh, which anyway is uh, quite a bit of uh, hindrance in this online lectures so it won't be purely mathematical it and also it won't really be dealing only with physical sciences it will venture into biological sciences a lot uh, somewhat in some other fields also i'll come to those things so if anyone else is also thinking that this is basically a study of physics it's not at all okay and neither is it uh, purely mathematical also one more thing which i myself is very sad about it's not paid anyway i'm just joking i'm not sad so this basically is what this course is not about now <clears throat> what can we expect uh, to have learned by the end of this course this is something you should know beforehand because uh, you should have a direction in your mind where you are going through going towards so firstly i expect that uh, uh, by the end of this course i i would try to give you as much details as possible which will give you the fair backdrop of the subject as well as the recent trends so i won't really say you would be in a beginner level actually i would say you would be quite an advanced level quite an intermediate level if if you if you are doing the assignments correctly i, I will be giving assignments uh, not too much but very important ones okay so so in a sense you would be in a intermediate intermediate uh, intermediate expertise of the field uh, moreover you would be equipped equipped to apply for phd yeah, i would actually teach you in in a way so that you come to know about the recent trends that is very important because this field is at least 30 years old 30 to 40 years old so a lot of things have already been covered so uh, the recent trends are actually not given in any books where you will uh, that will find so that, that that's something that i have come to learn through experience and other things so i would try to uh, give that out to you next <coughs> is you would be able to understand oh i already said that and uh, okay so this is also similar uh, that there are some new horizons to this field which are just being discovered so i would just touch those parts and maybe if you excel at those parts you might be the one who would start those new fields so i would touch those parts at the end <clears throat> also uh, this will help you model any system uh, what what do i mean by that i will teach very soon so i hope th this is one of the most exciting things about this course that uh, you see a system and you will be able to model this so i really uh, i really myself like this uh, the most about the subject so let's see if i can transfer that love to you finally uh, oh i already said that so okay this is the most important thing basically i am being selfish the only reason why i am doing this course is so that uh, i i can see you all in my lab uh, i am currently studying in iser kolkata uh, under professor shomit chowdhury and i need somebody in my lab anyway i am just kidding so <laughs> this is one of the basic reason why i want you to do this course well so let me move on <clears throat> so this is how it started i hope everybody understands what's happening here uh, except for the mobile phone i'll explain that later anyway so <clears throat> basically this uh, the history of this subject starts with physics and uh, we all know that uh, basically you also know the year right so in that year uh, newton wrote a very important book which basically is a is a kind of paradigm for the basic knowledge of science everything that we have learned till class 10 even after that is basically based on this basic understandings of newton which he wrote in principia mathematica so in that book he basically explained dynamics to a great extent what dynamics is basically it is the study of motion under forces the force can be due to thermal due to uh, the force can be due to thermal excitation can be due to uh, electromagnetic excitations uh, so basically he explained uh, dynamics of and uh, he explained motion under forces and also uh, in in a second part of the book he also explained the motion of the planets basically he discovered gravitation so this is what uh, the picture is showing uh, anyway 
the mobile phone is basically mocking the basic idea that I am teaching in an online course. So just wonder if you are Newton and you are not looking at the apples, you won't be able to make a discovery. Anyway, so these are the two things which he discovered, which he invented, I would rather say, uh, <coughs> to studies. However, he, he very soon came across something after discovering gravity, he realized that, uh, see, what basically he discovered in gravity, I should explain it for the, uh, the uh, larger audience here. Uh, so anything that rotates around the center, it gets attracted towards the center by a force called uh, centripetal force. You would know that because suppose you are making a stone rotate by a string, the tension in the string is a centripetal force. It is keeping the stone bounded, right? However, if you anytime cut the string, the stone would fly off tangentially, and that force, that that's uh, that that force which by which it flies off, is kind of a pseudo force. I won't go into details of that. So that force is called the centrifugal force. Fugal means uh, flying away type of thing. Okay, that is always tangential to the motion. So uh, any circular motion or any rotational motion for that purpose has two kinds of forces. Okay, a force that pulls inside and a force that uh, tries to take it away from the orbit. Now, Newton realized uh, very soon that in some moment of epiphany, basically, that if, if, the, if the planets are say, moving around the sun, then definitely there has to be a centripetal force. And in a, in a moment of epiphany, when the apple fell, off him, fell on him or whether it happened, nobody knows. Actually, it's not noted anywhere by Newton himself. So, so he realized that it is the same force which is attracting the bodies on Earth. The same force is also attracting all the bodies in the universe. And that is what the centripetal force is for the Earth, which is keeping it inside. So th this was a moment of epiphany, and then he had already discovered calculus by then. So he could actually make the differential equations of motion. What are differential equations? I would come to that later. Basically, they are equations which determine the motion of your body. Given an initial condition, you you can reach to a final condition. Like 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 you are throwing a ball. Given the initial condition, how you are throwing the ball with what velocity from what position? You can put them in, inside the differential equation and after solving, you can get the answer where the ball will be at what velocity after a particular amount of time. So these are what differential equations are. So anyway, uh, so Newton basically uh, solved the basic problems of dynamics, which had been standing from a long time. And also he uh, discovered gravity, but very soon he re realized what he discovered for two bodies, for example, for sun and planet system, sun and earth system. When he tried to extend that same for three bodies, he, he, he reached a roadblock. What kind of a roadblock? He, he realized very soon, genius as he was, uh, he, he, he was the most, uh, what should I say, achieved genius of his time. So there is no uh, doubting his genius. So he realized very soon that when I'm bringing in three bodies, the equations that are coming, they are in a sense unsolvable. So he spent the rest of his life trying to solve them. However, he, he also wrote to some of his friends he also wrote to some of his friends about this uh, problem uh, about to hook robert hook uh, but uh, basically he, he very soon he he realized that this is quite unsolvable and uh, due to the what what should i say the prejudices of that time there were problems which cannot be solved and they used to be thought uh, thought as uh, separate problems like they are controlled by god or something so he very soon uh, left the problem so this is where it stood the three body problem could not be solved however uh, a lot of years later, say around 220 years later, actually more than that, 224 or something, a person came. Uh, he, this is Henri Poincaré. He's a French. Uh, math, he was a French mathematician, as far as I remember. So he he found out that problem, the three-body problem, from Newton's book, and he started working on it. Very soon, he realized what Newton had also realized that this is not really solvable. In what sense? He realized that the, the functions that we knew by then, for example, sinusoidal functions, logarithmic functions, exponential functions, the solutions to this three body problem could not be expressed in any of those known functions, firstly. Secondly, he also realized that the differential equations, when solved, they are not giving any proper stable answer. And this is very important. Why stable answer is important? For example, let me explain. In basic class 10 physics, what you have learned, suppose you kick a ball, okay, the ball will, uh, suppose there, it's a frictionless force, a frictionless floor, the ball will uh, keep on moving with a fixed acceleration to in a fixed direction, suppose uh, it's a two-dimensional motion, there may be collisions, whatever happens, 
the ultimate answer is stable stable in the sense it will either have a fixed velocity or or maybe it get damped due to friction whatever happens we know it's its behavior at t equal to infinity this is what we know uh, mean by basic idea of stability it may be instable also that means it may go out to infinity however at t equal to infinity we know that it has gone out to infinity but what he realized what poiker realized that if we solve this three body problem we might have a solution which does neither go to infinity at t equal to infinity not does it settle down to any solution and such a thing was never known till then this is our around 1890 what basically mean by that is that <clears throat> suppose okay so stability okay no this is not what i want okay let me speak so suppose th there are three planets there is a sun and there are two planets uh, suppose there is sun moon and earth okay so the motion of the moon around the earth is a is a circle and the uh, earth is itself rotating and then it is also rotating around the sun so there are three types of motion here if he if if in modern computers if i evolve that now putting in all those three equations you will find that the motion is not at all stable the entire orbit moves it it precedes i mean it does all sorts of thing right uh, today we call it actually chaos i am not going there so what poiker found in 1890 is that we never get a stable solution at t equal to infinity it neither goes off to infinity which we know obviously we are not flying off to infinity nor does it stable uh, settle in a stable orbit okay so he he realized that the, this is this is not the i mean the solution is not analytically possible so what he did is a very important thing he tried to analyze it geometrically by drawing diagrams which are called phase diagrams i'm not going there today so he tried since he could not solve it analytically he he involved he in, uh, invented a method not a method many methods by which we can solve them geometrically so that we can understand the qualitative behavior of the system even if we cannot say exactly what is going to happen okay we can predict the behavior of the system so so i we will learn those things later okay but just remember this important thing that poincaré was the first person who realized what, uh, that there may be uh, there may be solutions which are not stable at equal to infinity and for trying to solve them we need a geometrical approach and not a an analytical approach like drawing pictures and imaginations and sort of that sort of stuff so in that way the three body problem rested for a few moment few few days so around 1890 he is the first person who who observed the strange behavior and wrote this however you see you see science then was becoming very rapidly physics basically was changing extremely rapidly around 1887 we have the famous michelson moldy experiment which basically failed to prove the existence of ether it's something i am not going there due to which we uh, very soon we realize that the vacuum around us it does not con consist of any substance called ether through which light moves that is light can move through vacuum that that was the first thing that that i mean around 1887 we came to know and around that time uh, robert maxwell sorry james clerk maxwell he also basically formed the uh, equations for electromagnetism and we very soon had electromagnetic theory of light we realized that light is nothing but electric and magnetic wave coupled together so these things were happening and very soon in 1905 einstein wrote his famous three papers one on relativity and uh, one 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 on brownian motion which basically uh, led way to quantum very soon and he also wrote a paper on photoelectric effect at around 1910 and planck also wrote a paper in 1905 uh, about uh, quantum nature of atoms so you see the entire physics was ha having so much things around it like relativity quantum mechanics and all that up till 1950 almost everybody forgot about these things about about uh, three body problem and about poincare's uh, strange observations so so it it wasn't really bothered about and poincare died out and <clears throat> we also had another revolution in electronics we were having vacuum diodes uh we are having i mean not the diodes we see today they were used to be made of vacuum tubes so you might get uh, you might see the pictures of them in some old photographs uh, so i'm not going there so we started having computers computers completely made of vacuum diodes not not like the electronics we see today okay so uh, basically this was this was due to the world war 2 i guess some of you know about this that alan turing turing uh, was the person who basically sought out to solve the poured across the atlantic that that was come so that they can predict what the uh, what the allies were going to do beforehand so that they can predict and they can uh, save their 
armies and all so so they needed some system which can solve ports extremely fast and that's not possible because the because the uh, because the allies used to change their port every day so so to detect that port we need something extremely fast and that kind of accelerated towards making computers so uh, and that is how actually by 1950 we had really good computers not as good as what we have today however by 1950s due to that world war 2 thing and all we had extremely good computers we had eniac eniac could do a lot of calculations although they used to be as big as a desk uh, so during that time since we have a computer now we can now put in data and try to figure out things which we could not do analytically by hand like poincare could not solve it analytically right uh, so many years back so these things started become possible and and, and since the war was, war was over and since a, since a new war began uh, actually the cold war began people had to move towards the space race and have to uh, make more calculate more more what should i say tough calculations like you have to send a rocket to space right so so computers were needed more than any time else in the history of physics and and they started getting developed more and more around this time we started having more, more new fields of study like meteorological science which was not really much and not really a important science before because we did not have computers we may have had some theories about convection currents and other things however the calculations were extremely difficult and nobody almost uh, could solve anything analytically so when computer came these were the fields which were starting to get applied for the first time so let let me move on from poincare now uh, so this is how a three body problem looks like with time I just, it, it just uh, this is actually a frozen picture after a lot of time so basically you can see the orbits have gone through every place so it's it's really uh, dirty nasty so it's not really solvable so let me move on this is the eniac Th this is basically uh, one of the eniacs it's this is the one which basically was used uh, to make a prediction about weather the person who used this not the one in this picture this is the advertisement from that time uh, the person who used this is called uh, edward lorenz ed lorenz he was a meteorologist he was working with his eniac to solve a particular set of differential equation which could model the weather very uh, basic uh, in a, in a very basic level but quite quite a good uh, um, but quite in, in a quite a good analogy right so he had three sets of equation uh, those equations when solved they could predict a few weather behavior and it was not a very bad uh, even today we use some of the uh, some of those equations so he, he in 1963 he was working with his eniac, ENIAC. and he put those equations in and he and basically what he what what we have to do here is you can see the picture here there are some typewriters to uh, punch the numbers there are some control panels control panel is basically the one on the right so there are some on, on, sorry control panel is the one which is below so there are some uh, what should i say some switches like integrate or do something like and inside there are vacuum tubes it's a it's a huge box you can understand so basically uh, when you punch something uh, you give some equations and you ask it to solve it solves and it takes days hours months at times okay so so it took it, it used to take a long time okay it's it's not as fast as today so he had, he put those equations in his computer and then he solved he pressed enter he went out he after 2 3 days he came back he saw the solution he said hmm, okay so he, he was just going on with that and just mind you there is no there is no oscilloscope or anything which could show the result of what is happening or what we were i mean what the solution is okay so uh, so it's just data just okay after this time it revolves to this okay after this time it evolves to this it's like that okay and with that he could he could he could use a graph paper and he could draw it himself how the how 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 the variables are changing so with that weather could be predicted okay something like that so after a few days he came back and he saw the data and then he was doubtful about a about a particular bit of data so what he did is instead of again doing it from the beginning because it takes such a huge time he took a part of uh, he, he took that particular sentence and put it inside and wanted to evolve it from there that would be the new initial condition and then he would evolve it from there okay so suppose from 37th line he took up the, uh, that after 37 this is the answer he put it in and then he went away again for 2 3 days he came back and he saw the result and he was uh, he was baffled the result at the end of third day was extremely different and the pattern of what was happening in 72 73 74 step 
is extremely different, different from what is happening from the previous 72, 73, 74. Which means when he started from one and evolved it a few days back, is completely different from when he started from 37 and evolved it. However, he used the same data. And and Lawrence was baffled. Uh, I like for example he he the result was 4.5325. He put that result inside as per, suppose a 4.32 and evolved and he saw it is entirely different. And he was baffled because previously uh, this was never a problem because because just imagine, uh, just imagine that you have a, you have a, uh, uh, you have a, what should I say, ball. Okay. So uh, in a completely vacuum environment, there is no air, nothing and you throw the ball. Okay. With some particular velocity. Suppose that velocity is also fixed by some machine, not even by your hand. Okay. So you know, it is like those turbinated type of things. Okay. That ball is coming at hundred kilometer per hour. You know that. Okay. And you can even select the spot where it will fall. So everything is predetermined. So if you, you make that machine do that every time, it will do that every time. However, you are very, uh, you should, you can be very sure that there is some error in the machine. That error can be of the order of 0 0.0025, like in case of Lawrence. But that won't ever make a problem. You, you can put the, them in the same equation of Newton's law. Like, uh, do you remember the equations? They were s equal to u plus 8, ut plus half at square, v equal to u plus 80, v square equal to u square plus 2s, these kind of equations. So if you put them there in these equations, those small, tiny errors would actually be tiny. Okay. Uh, when they come, like, say I do it with 5 kilometer per hour and I do it with 5.00 something kilometer per hour. You can yourself calculate that the uh, that the answer would differ by a very small amount. Okay, so so Lawrence was baffled how how if I just round up round it up and put it how can it get so so different? Otherwise, only other possible solution was that any ENIAC has that the ENIAC is not working well. Okay, uh, this is the only other possible solution. Uh, but he he was quite sure that this uh, this is working correctly. Uh, the only problem that can happen is due to this amplification of the error. Now he had to think about it. So what he did is he left the computer and he started solving it analytically. He realized that it is exactly what is what the computer is showing. That if in that system, if I use 4.325, what the answer is coming is very different from if I use 4.32. Like initial condition, if that initial condition is changed by even an extremely tiny bit, that may be 10 to the power minus 10 order. Even then, after a long time, the solution has become completely different from what it would have been if the error wasn't there. So this is an extremely strange thing which baffled Lawrence and Lawrence realized that this is something completely new. He sat with it and uh, did a lot of things and he took out a paper on it. And in that paper, basically he, he mentioned for the first time since Poincaré, Poincaré uh, was in 1890, since Poincaré for the first time he, he mentioned this, that he has noticed some deterministic apiridic behavior. Now I will explain this very soon. What this is? Now this is 1963. Okay, the computer uh, race have started. Space race have started. Sorry, space race has started. World War is going on. So, so these things are not really given much importance. Again, Lawrence has forgotten for around 15, 20 years, and completely in a different sense, some other people starts working on some other things. Other things like okay, let me see. Okay, let me go back. Some other things like say Mendelbrock in 1980s started working on something called fractals i'll come to that so 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 these things were happening all very parallelly and no, nothing related to each other so this is how the field was moving like it's not like we do something after that somebody evolves on it it was not happening like that okay it was happening in a very non-linear way so i'll go to those things first let me complete this lawrence thing lawrence in that paper where he wrote deterministic apiridic flow he realized that very small, tiny differences in these systems can get amplified to huge differences after a few days. And this is one of the reason I would say that weather is not predictable. Even today, maybe the model can be made better and better and better. Even, do, even then, there are models which Lawrence Lear realized in which even a very small error bar of the order of minus 20, say whatever, that will get amplified after say a long period of time. Currently, currently for best weather model predictions, uh, as far as I know, uh, the, the possible prediction is up to 15 days. And in the, in the, in the ones we have in our mobiles or mostly which we see, they are about six to seven days. So that can be very well predicted, not very well. I would say behavior can be predicted like, like a cyclone is coming after six days that can be predicted, but where the paths will be that can be predicted at most at two to three days back. 
and exact path changes in every say every six hours, twelve hours. So so you can never predict it due to the inherent nature of the system. And I'll come to that. Okay, don't think this is some uh, some incapability from our part. So I'll come to this thing. So <clears throat> this was termed later on. He did not term that later on. This was termed as the butterfly effect. Basically, this diagram explains it that if there is a flap of a butterfly that can form a tornado somewhere else, because that flap of a butterfly will be a change in the order of some 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 micro level order, some actually extremely small level order. However, after a long time, that small change that has entered into the variables, say the wind speed. That small change can get amplified, and that can form a tornado. This is basically the idea, and this is extremely uh, well proven now. So that, that that was later on renamed as butterfly effect. Lawrence did not rename it. Finally, Lawrence liked the name a lot, and around 1984, uh, he even gave a talk where he basically mentioned it in a in an opposite sense that uh, can the flap of a butterfly prevent a tornado? So so anyway, you can find the talk online. So it's a very funny talk. Anyway, so let me move on. <clears throat> so this is what I was talking about: determinism and predictability. See, when you were small, when you used to learn Newton's laws and everything, and when you used to learn physics, it was like, okay, so this is the equation. Okay, I'll put it, and it's solved. Everything in physics, whatever you learned, maybe maybe heat equations, maybe maybe electrodynamics, whatever you have equations, even even quantum mechanics, you have equations, you solve them. You might say quantum is actually. Uncertain or indeterminate kind of nature inherently. However, even then, you have a fixed probability of this incident happening or that incident happening. In that sense, it is deterministic. You know the probability that either either the cat, uh, Schrodinger's cat is dead or alive. I guess you all understand the allegory. Okay, I'm not getting into that story. So, so there is a fixed probability that it is half chance dead, half chance alive. It's kind of that. So, the it is deterministic in the sense that the probability. That this will happen, or this will happen, or this will happen. They are all predetermined, and either one will happen, either one of them will happen. So if you repeat that for millions of times, say one eighth times, this will happen, and it's predetermined. So in that sense, even quantum mechanics is deterministic. Do you get the point? So any mechanics which we knew so far, whatever we knew so far, is was deterministic. And th for the first time, Lorentz saw that this is a system which is deterministic. Because it has equations, if I put initial conditions, it will give final results. So it is deterministic. However, this is not predictable because uh, because there will be some amount, some amount of small error which your computer is neglecting. Suppose there, I mean there can be no computer that will take up to the infinite digit, right? So for that system, wherever we stop, that is a, a rounding off. And for that, maybe after a long time. the nature is completely different from what it will be the nature of the solution so it is not predictable although inherently it is deterministic in this sense you might say that this is some drawback from our part however this is not a drawback that we can never make a computer never make anything that will take in the exact initial condition right so we come across systems which are not predictable however they are deterministic deterministic in a sense that they have equations if i put initial conditions they will give answers but the problem is that the initial conditions that i put in if they have some errors they will get hugely amplified in these systems okay and this made a fall of determinism and that is the most important thing in physics i mean in, even in it should not just physics i would say in science i mean you have to have determinism like you have to have something some some set of rules to which if you apply some initial conditions you would get some result this has to happen you cannot have a unpredictable science right this is just as i said even even quantum mechanics is not unpredictable i mean it is unpredictable yet it is in in a sense it is deterministic we know uh, it is not unpredictable we know that if you do this million times these this this these things will happen it is not even unpredictable but this is the first time we are coming across such a system and this was a problem and and even lorenz could not publish this paper in uh, in uh, reputed journals he had to publish this in some meteorological journal which physicists don't read and this this stayed obscure for a long time say two decades okay uh, and and nobody really was bothering about these things because other things were also happening for example standard model of nuclear physics got discovered around this time so a lot of things were happening uh, so basically science was changing extremely rapidly so these things this small problems nobody bothered about right that determinism is failing nobody really bothered about and then around 1980s okay sorry 
19 sorry 1960s a very important book got written uh, i don't remember the year 65 maybe thomas kuhn who was a philosopher philosopher of science wrote a very important book which is perhaps the most important book in in history of uh, philosophy of science it's called structure of scientific revolution you must read that book everyone who is here who wants to uh, study for what to say who wants to get into research you must read this book anyway in this book thomas kuhn introduce a term called paradigm <clears throat> what is paradigm for a long time we have some certain sets of rules some methods some techniques to do physics to do science to do biology to do commerce to do uh, sociology these sets of rules which are agreed by the sociologists by the by the by the economists that is called a paradigm why do we need paradigms for example you might ask that why do physicists need paradigms i mean there is no absolute i mean there should not be an absolute truth we should always question However, you should realize that if you do not have paradigms, like in maths, if you do not have some axioms, we cannot prove the next thing. You can debate about those axioms in the first place and get them settled. However, those axioms cannot be proved. There are axioms which cannot be proved. I will not really want to go into details of that. Uh, there is something called Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Try to find out about that. Anyway, I think Veritasium today released a video on that. You can check that out. anyway so so there are some set of rules which can never be proved and we we consider them as paradigms we move on with science in a way that how to uh, explore new features with those paradigms this is how science moves okay so before kuhn wrote this book everyone used to think that even maybe you might think that science is a linear process somebody does something somebody corrects on that somebody corrects on that somebody corrects on that and linearly it goes on Kuhn was the first person who realized, who showed to the world, who wrote in the book, that that is not ex- absolutely not how science has proceeded so far or will proceed. The philosophy of science is completely different how science proceeds. This is what he said. You can start from the top right corner. Uh, it's pre-science. Pre-science means uh, some basic knowledge which we can never prove. So let that get into the system. and then we do some normal science let me explain this normal science thing for example say for a long time somebody has said okay these 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 things are true <clears throat> and then everybody is working on those 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 things okay that's normal science suddenly somebody comes across something which is completely anom- anomalous to all this and then some more people come across something which are absolutely anomalous and the previous paradigms cannot explain them and then the model reaches a crisis and then some people realize no that this is not a duck face this is basically a rabbit they try to see the same system from a different point of view and that model is revolutionized in a new way we have a completely new model by which even these new things can be explained as well as the old things and this is called a paradigm shift this is the first time in kuhn's book we have this word this word was discovered by kuhn paradigm shift and then again normal science come goes on so basically kuhn realized scientific revolutions are do not happen as milestones of a linear path it happens in cycles for example let me explain for a long time ptolemy used to believe in heliocentric universe the sun at the center of the universe and it took a paradigm shift for people to realize for 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 copernicus to come out that knows actually the earth is in the center because this explains a lot more things similarly newton's gravity stayed for 200 years until einstein realized that no some more features can be encompassed and some features cannot be explained by that so we need a change in the model so einstein's gravitational theory uh, gtr general theory of relativity is a paradigm shift so in this way sciences always have had paradigm shifts quantum mechanics is a paradigm shift from classical mechanics so <clears throat> now when we have come across such a critical crisis that we a poincare has uh, discovered something Lorentz has discovered something, and then around 1980s and 85, I'm coming to those those things. Some more people have discovered some anomalies which can never be explained by the physics which you used to know. Like deterministic physics is not true anymore. Deterministic is true. Predictability is not true anymore. So we need some new models because it's a crisis right now, and this is only the this is the right time when we have to go for a paradigm shift. So this was this 1980s was that time for this this particular subject. So this is Thomas Kuhn. So around 1983, Mendelbrock was working on something absolutely different. He was working on uh, 
should I say, stock market. He was looking at cotton sales chart, and he found that the chart, if zoomed and zoomed, it, it is almost self-similar at all scales. Okay, so he found that this is not only true for cotton uh, stock market; this is true for gold stock market. And then very soon he realized this is true for uh, beaches. For example, suppose you are looking at the beach at Tamil Nadu; it has a human face type of feature, right? And if you use a scale, you can measure what that is. However, what you measure will absolutely depend on what is the size of your scale. So, if you use a smaller and a smaller scale, it is obvious you will be covering more and more surface, and your answer will never be a fixed value. It will keep on increasing, and which is very strange. So, Mendelbrot realized that there are structures which are self-similar, and he called them fractals. And so, a completely new uh, new field of mathematics was developing. This is one fractal that you can see. It's called the Koch snowflake. It was discovered by Koch. You can see it is self similar. You can keep on zooming in any particular branch and zooming in and zooming in. So it will keep on, it will keep on uh, repeating itself, right? So there are some other structures as well. You can find very beautiful structure of fractals. So Mendelbrot realized that uh, uh, this is something, some new mathematics which we should. Uh, th th this is this was kind of a paradigm shift in mathematics. Okay. So because we, uh, nobody uh, before for thought of these things which can have different values at different scale. If you increase the, if you decrease the scales uh, parameters, the the area or the lengths are increasing, right? So anyway, around 1984, another another biologist called Robert May, he realized he 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 realized that population population growth logistic model, which we say, is also giving behavior which was not at all known before. For example, suppose you, today you have uh, you have a particular amount. Suppose you have two. Uh, bunnies. Okay. Tomorrow you have four bunnies. Say geometric progression, right? But this cannot go on forever because the resource is limited. So, so the day you have 40 bunnies, maybe the resource is not enough to su uh, sustain 40 bunnies from bunnies. It will be enough to sustain say 35 bunnies. So five bunnies have to die. So in the geometric progression, you have to introduce some term which will kill the bunnies. In this way, can you uh, imagine? Can you realize that there will be a stable value? Which, if increases, get decreased. If decreases, can increase. So the bunnies population will try will try to stay stable in a particular fixed value. <clears throat> he realized if that rate of geometric progression is changed by some amount, say today to tomorrow 16, then with changing of that rate, something extremely unpredictable happens. And he he said that the the the, uh, that the bunnies do not get stable at a particular value. It may get stable at two values. Or it may get, it may not get stable at all. Every population is extremely chaotic. So strange things were happening, and he noted this in a paper. <clears throat> and almost these three papers: Robert May's paper, Mendelbrot's uh, fractals, and Ed Lorenz's discovery of unpredictability of weather. These three papers were enough to show us that a new paradigm was required, both in physics and mathematics. So Robert May realized this very soon. And he wrote this very, very famous article, which basically was the starting of this new dynamics. He wrote that <clears throat> very simple mathematical models can also have extremely complicated dynamics. You can read this paper. These all are very readable papers and extremely beautiful paper on this subject. <clears throat> this was in 1988, 1988, I guess. Anyway, <clears throat> so this kind of was the beginning of this new field, which we are going to study. And very soon there were people from biology. Who started getting examples in biology, which which are should I say chaotic, which uh, which are uh, which are very strange from what was predicted before. People in economics started getting this. People people from political science, from sociology, in every branch, people were getting examples uh, which are not really as predicted before. So this field boomed a lot, and very soon there were more books, more popular books, should I say. The one on your left is was the most popular book. It was around 1987 or 88, and this book was extremely popular. It is still extremely popular. Many of you might have heard of this. You may read this book. It's a beautiful book. It's completely uh, for the uh, lay man. And you, that person, James Click, has also written another book. Uh, okay, I'll come to that later because that's uh, some advanced thing. There's another person called Strogards. Somebody who has taken the course already in in your uh, master's course, you might have definitely heard Strobards. It's a, it's a textbook. However, this is also a very readable readable book, and this was this was the first book which I read about this subject. You can try this book as well. 
and there are some other books which were coming out around that time 92 93 and people normal people like you and me started getting introduced to the subject and to the word butterfly effect and to chaos and th- and what happens is when the public comes to know about some new development that is when the science gets a real push for example if if the if the ac- particle accelerator if that certain thing was not publicized and so hyped they wouldn't have got any funding because only when the public gets interested in something things get funding right so you will understand these things as we go on so so basically james leek uh, did a extreme good extremely good job to the to the science of this field because he got funding because normal public came to know about this thing and they want they were very excited about it people came to know about fractals people started uh, simulating fractals on computer screens and all so people got very interested in the subject so <clears throat> it got a huge boom so now i'm coming to the overview of what all we will be covering in this subject from 1990s to 2010s or 20s whatever has happened don't try to read too much into this uh, i'll be reading this out for you i'll i'll come to this picture later also okay no, if this picture is not clear to you uh, don't worry i'll come to this picture later so basically we will study systems which have one variable or two variable or three variable or many variables something like that what is a variable variable is something which changes for example in case of that ball throwing example the velocity is a variable position is a variable however are both these variable independent you will find yes this both are independent in case of throwing of a ball okay so so we we will need a ver- we will need variables okay so we will study systems which has one variable two variable also uh, let me go to some other example than other than physics let let's let's say population their population the number of people itself is a variable okay we would just need the number of people at that moment and we may have some equation which can predict the exact number of people at some later moment in in political science for example we have a particular amount of people who are left minded particular amount of people who are right minded and a particular amount of people who are centrist yes that exists anyway so suppose there is some interaction between left and center right and center but no interaction between left and right will the dynamics of the system change will more people become left will more people become right these things can be predicted here what is the what is the variable basically there are three variables n1 n2 n3 but are these three variables independent no because there is a total number n so if i know n1 and n2 i can find n3 so basically we need here <coughs> two variables n1 and n2 so this is a two variable system so the in this way we will find systems where there are several variables we will find equations we will have some initial condition we will try to solve them but not analytically we will solve them geometrically this is the basic essence of this study we will have to draw graphs and pictures and diagrams and we will be able to so- solve unimaginable things for example let me go let me actually tell you what are the unimaginable unimaginable things uh i suppose most of you have uh, heard of romeo and juliet okay let me not go into romeo and juliet this is a very very old tale let me go to something something classic born with the wind okay uh, many of you might not have watched it say shesher kobita of rete god whatever a classic love story okay where the where the protagonist is a is of a particular nature and uh, and and the heroine is also of a particular nature so there are two variables here what are the two variables uh, the the amount of love of the of the romeo for the juliet and the amount of love of the juliet for the romeo these are the two variables here and we can predict a love affair okay avanti abhuti is actually <laughs> saying the name of another movie uh, okay i'll come i'll try to i'll try to find the model of that movie <laughs> anyway so suppose uh, i'll uh, i'll go to get to that suppose suppose there are this, uh, such two variables okay the love of e, uh, uh, love of a for b and b for a this can also be in some other sense for example a customer and client uh, sorry a client and a, and a um, company relation okay this is the amount of uh, demand from the customer this is the amount of supply possible from the uh, from the from the company and and these two variables depend on each other and there are some sets of equation so can you predict after some time what will happen after some time how the love affair will become so so these things these models everything can be modeled if if we have some variable and some equation everything can be modeled you can look at this you can look at this this uh, diagram which i'm showing here uh, there are examples like uh, in the completely top right uh, corner there there are examples like say okay not right say let me let come down okay top uh, bottom right the last word here it, it says life yes of course life itself is a very unpredictable thing this that is only because we it perhaps is chaotic there are extremely infinite number of variables here okay so our theories have not developed as much to go there right now we have a paradigm for n equal to 1 
for two and three. For n equal to four, a few systems are coming up, but we are completely at a loss for higher end. We have studied some things for a lot of uh, we call them networks. Okay, so new studies are coming up. So uh, maybe we will touch those things a few a bit. And when when the variables become extremely uh, infinite, okay. For example, say say what should I say? Uh, say internet, right? We have we have an almost uh, countably finite, but a huge number of websites on the internet which are active at a particular moment, which gives hyperlinks to another countably infinite, and which brings in hyperlinks from there. So it's a huge structure of network. Okay. So can we predict that if the rate by which uh these links and hyperlinks are growing can we really predict after 10 years what will become or something like that so these models can be done i just given example of internet because that's the most understandable understandable however there are some other examples also which really puts for example can we predict which species will become endangered very soon by looking at the interaction of it with the environment so so basically you see this field is extremely extremely percolate percolatable to the to different systems so from whichever background you are you may try to grasp whatever uh, uh, whatever you can and try to find out different things from your own what should i say field and try to apply it there because that is what basically the purpose of this course is i just want to spread the knowledge of nonlinear dynamics so that it goes more out from physics and biology it is completely resting on physics and biology currently and it spreads to the other parts okay so i'll come to these things later so i'll kind of uh, in my talk uh, uh, and i'll take some questions so before ending my talk i want to tell you that this chaos is not really new i mean the term is new the term came out around 1988 after james gleek wrote the book uh, i think someone called york uh, a particular physicist gave the name gave the name chaos anyway but however this this was extremely extremely uh, uh, old idea even in literature ray bradbury at around 1952 i think wrote this book i don't know if any of you have seen the movie the movie is not at all good you can read the book so this movie had exactly something similar there was a protagonist uh, who see, who who tries to go to the past and tries to kill a dinosaur and it was told by the pub company who was making this time travels possible that do not change anything and it was very well explained by bradbury in this sense that suppose you kill one 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 fly one butterfly okay that butterfly could have eaten a few a few uh, food and uh, eaten nectar from a few flowers and could have spread pollen to billions of places those pollen could have given born to uh, given birth to some plants and those could be eaten by some cattle there those cattle completely died out because you kill that butterfly from those cattle some tiger population could have survived so basically he very beautifully explained how just killing a butterfly can bring extremely uh, extremely amplified changes to the environment <clears throat> so anyway you understand the protagonist did not listen to him and by mistake he did kill a butterfly and he comes back to see in the future i am not revealing the end here so this is basically the idea of the story and you see the butterfly is here in 1952 he talks of the butterfly and this butterfly effect whatever happened was basically i really have never found out who who basically gave the name and how uh in most cases i have seen uh, lorenz himself named it in 18 1980s but i feel this has some connection to this story of bradbury <clears throat> anyway and there is another another particular hugely popular movie where this was mentioned so i would like to end with that yeah i guess uh not <laughs> many of you would remember this scene so this is where it was mentioned in 1988 i guess 89 or something like that and this is from where actually the public became i mean public never reads popular science books right so they heard it from jurassic park they they went out and they saw there's a, there's a book called chaos and then james clee got famous so basically this is this is what exactly the particular scene plays out i really don't know if you will be able to hear this tell me are you hearing this or should i have to turn on the sound are you hearing this no we cannot hear it no no then okay just tell me that okay 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 maybe i have to turn on the sound my system sound sorry hmm okay 
not sharing. Oh, no, 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 no. Just a sec. Just a sec. Sorry, I stopped sharing by mistake. Can somebody help me out here? What do I have to do? Oh, okay, I got it. We are present, present, present. To hey, huh? To sound like you are Are you presenting the tab? No, you are not presenting the tab. You are presenting your entire screen. I wish the problems didn't happen. I guess you yourself can find this video in YouTube. So let me not play this. There is some issue. So however, I am done with my talk. So I, I would really end uh, the presenting now. I'll be for two minutes speaking the overview of what just happened. Okay. So basically, I gave you an overview of how the field came into being and where it has delved into now. It can you can you can uh, you can be a chemist and you can uh, look at your dynamics of equation if you know the if you know the react uh, how much reactants you have those are the variables you can be a you can be a sociological uh, sociologist and you can find the behavior of the society say downfall of civilizations these things okay so thank you Ankit for sharing the clip so uh, so you can be you can be an economist and you can use this in your field <clears throat> also. Uh, uh, okay. Am I stuck? Yeah. Sorry, there's some issue with my internet or something. We can hear you. Okay, okay. Somehow my video is not on, so it's not a problem anymore. I have stopped presenting. So basically, the summary is that from the next day we will learn how to apply these things. Uh, but however, in the next introduction course, I'll basically be uh, uh, speaking about the about the tools you will use. Okay, so you, you are you are out to uh, do a huge task here. So you need you need some weapons. So I'll be basically giving you those weapons. They are not huge weapons. They are very small tools which you have actually learned in class ten or twelve. Uh, may, maybe uh, if you haven't, it would it maybe you even have learned something in BSc. So I think we'll be able to pr proceed with uh, learning them again very fast. So in the next introduction class, I'll I'll be also making use of some knowledge of graphs. So what I would request you all to is that please uh, have a copy with you because uh, there uh, I will also be using board. So there will be necessity for doing for solving it yourselves because this course is more about uh, trying to draw, trying to imagine, trying to trying to look it from a different angle. Okay, it's you can say it's kind of like architecture or sculpture or something. It's an art. It's not really a science. It is a science. I'm just kidding. So basically, you'll have to do it yourself, right? And so for the next class, please be ready with some uh, calculators or some or some uh, or some paper to draw. So for today, I would take questions from any part, any part that you have uh, had some question on or anything that you may ask from the introduction course. Just don't be shy. Just ask me now. So I'm waiting for questions now from the entire so, thing which I said or from anything. So okay, what is our target here? Uh, is it just trying to find a solution or predicting a nature or just finding a trend? Third, what is what is the last thing you said? Finding a finding a trend in a system. Trend. Okay, okay, okay. Very good question. So basically, show this question was what is what is our uh, what is our uh, what are we looking out here? Are we solving it or are we finding a trend or some? Show basically see uh, what is what is happening here is that Poincaré discovered that not everything can be solved analytically. In a sense, there may be functions which we don't yet know. This uh, this may sound very very strange to you. But have you heard of ellipti elliptical integrals? If you haven't, you may just go and search in Google. I'm not uh, going into mathematics part today. You, you will see that these, these are some, some integrals which cannot be solved in terms of any functions that we know. Okay, so, so uh, we have to solve it in some other way. So there are things which we don't yet know. So, so, so there are, and also there are systems in which everything, even if we know everything, the initial conditions, if it changes even a bit, this entire system predictability gets changed. So what are we looking for here? We basically are not 
at all looking for any any analytical solution we are just trying to like you said we are just trying to predict the behavioral changes which will which it will go through behavioral changes like if the if the system is oscillating will it stop oscillating will it do something else just like that for example suppose you have a population model okay uh, i'm coming to the thing onurudh is saying suppose you have a population model will it will it stabilize at a particular population will it stabilize stabilize at something else suppose our population will it keep on exponentially increasing or will it become sigmoid that is will it get saturated uh, also it, it will it will it come down some day like like covid is happening now will will we die out some day so so these things this natural behavioral changes are what we can predict and we will learn something called bifurcations you can see uh, which which in physics terms is something like phase transition like the nature of the entire system changes like like the water changes to ice the entire structure changes okay so so these changes we can we can uh, what should i say predict the behavioral changes we can predict that these things are going to happen at these parameters so that is what for you are focusing on the geometry of it the the money uh, what should i say the, the nature of it not really the solution of it okay so i guess you have got an answer so this is what we are looking for in this entire course i'll see the messages now there was a message from onurudho he is saying prediction is somehow bread and butter of machine learning here we are also getting some similar flavor how ml is connected to, to nld okay <clears throat> okay see machine learning is basically uh, learning from uh, i mean we are developing algorithms which are trying to uh, predict patterns and then from those patterns it is trying to make its own sets of rules and then it is taking in new information and seeing whether the patterns needs to be changed in this way machine is continuously keeping on learning it's called deep learning so basically it is something which we ourselves are doing from a huge long time in human human beings so you are asking that prediction is something uh, bread and butter of machine learning they are basically ev in every step the the entire algorithm is changing itself to say, fit to the new data or something like a change is happening right so so it is predicting on based on new data so this is something different in nld what we are doing is we have a fixed system we are studying that fixed system and we are trying to see whether that fixed system has some behavioral changes at some other parameters the system itself is not changing i mean for us, for an example for example system is not changing in the sense the equations are not changing at different parameter regions we see the behavior changes completely for example suppose you you have a uh, you have a, a buckle uh, buckle of uh, say say wood okay a rectangular wood structure on that wood structure you keep a brick you keep two bricks you keep three bricks the buckle slowly starts to uh, i mean the wood slowly starts to buckle it will either buckle on the left hand side or on the right hand side depending on its structure this 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 behavioral change that it is not stable these type of changes in the system are what we are looking for however in machine learning we are not really looking for these changes we are trying to develop our system better and better so in a sense uh, it might look similar uh, but they are different processes i feel onurudh you may again ask question if this doesn't solve your uh, question okay so i'll go to avantika bhuti uh, she is asking is it possible to link the current pandemic situation to butterfly effect is if is how uh, i guess your question is something like uh, whether uh, this is a chaotic behavior what we are seeing now okay so firstly uh, we can model pandemic situation we have something called the sir model there are susceptible people there are infected people and there are recovered people that model can be extended to seir model and more so uh, i mean we can have more and more kinds of people these are all the variables we can have a variable of susceptible a variable of infected and then we can have equations how susceptible become infected like say two uh, like say uh, one susceptible people can affect two in, uh, people to become infected so there can be equations about that so we do have models of epidemics so what you are asking basically is whether that model right now which is happening whether that is chaos whether that is chaotic butterfly effect basically is chaos so in a sense i would say no right now what we are, uh, what we are observing it is not yet chaotic it is it can still be it can still be predicted uh, whatever whatever is going on we are trying uh, you can find out there is a there is a particular uh, website which iser kolkata have opened uh, sesi from iser kolkata they are trying to key, uh, predict the model uh, i think they are changing the model every day through machine learning or something 
and through their model right now i do not see any chaos happening it is still predictable i mean it is increasing at some some very fast rate or it is trending down however that model is still predictable okay it's no more it's not a butterfly even right now uh, however i cannot really say how uh, i mean uh, in future we might know when we again look in retrospect so we don't know right now rajesh monuli is asking one chinese girl it a bad okay 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 so that is in a sense okay so rajesh i agree with you this is uh, this seems like butterfly effect uh however this is the problem in popularization popularization of science uh, basically this this is not exactly what butterfly effect means i mean in literature it means that that a very small change is giving rise to a very big change but don't you think this is possible in anything for example look at the function fx equal to x square or fx equal to x to the power 100 for that matter that change is extremely fast right so if a error is there very soon that error will be highly magnified right so it it is not very necessary that that butterfly effect it is not very necessary that butterfly effect is needed i mean i mean sorry chaos is needed for amplifying a small error okay so chaos also has some other sin, uh, other type of behavior as well one thing is this sensitive dependence of initial on initial condition which we are talking about that is the butterfly effect however chaos also have some other very important features which needs to be maintained very important feature is it will not run out to infinity our our system will be bounded the solutions of the system that means the weather the weather for example the weather the the speed of the air the temperatures the pressures none of them will either stable down to any value or will go to infinity or will become zero none, but it will keep on changing very uh what should i say chaotically okay so another very important aspect of chaos other than butterfly effect is this boundedness so uh, so even if we think that anything which changes very rapidly can be called chaos that is not true i mean butterfly effect is a very uh, tongue in cheek type of uh, thing uh, type of notation so we can use it anywhere we want however this is where um, i mean pseudo science comes in okay so i'm not uh, t- telling you rajesh i mean i mean t- i'm telling this to everybody here that uh, butterfly effect is very wrongly used like many other terms in physics okay so when we will study chaos we will un- we'll see that there has to be some other features as well to call it uh, chaos okay anyway so avantika putri also has asked another question can chaotic system be graphed definitely avantika it can be graphed it can definitely be graphed however that graph will keep on uh, i mean since it is it does not settle down that graph will keep on uh, i mean drawn for in, for infinity okay for example that uh, orbit structure that i showed you the three body problem it looked like a tangled wool so we can keep on i mean drawing that forever and ever okay it will never end because it will never settle down or not go to infinity not become zero so it will uh, we can graph it but it will go on and perhaps you have also seen this beautiful diagram that lorentz system has which itself looks like a butterfly so that is itself a, a drawing of chaos okay so now rajesh i understand that you are kidding so okay now i am open for more questions from today's whatever i said today whatever i said today any question don't bother you can ask any question you want okay so do you have any question about the course about the upcoming course okay so i guess we can call it a day okay okay i am having more questions please unmute yourself and ask not a problem don't wait to type so the solutions of the equations are diverging uh okay okay see so you are right in a sense that yes the solutions are diverging because uh, as i said initial conditions mein thoda bhi agar kuch error hota hai to it diverges to a huge error in that sense yes it is diverging okay in normal systems thoda error rehta hai to wo thoda hi rehta hai baad mein like if i if i have a small error in throwing the ball the ball will maybe shift by a very small amount but in these systems the error gets amplified a lot so in that sense yes the solutions of the equations are diverging however they are the sol- one solution itself is not diverging out to infinity solutions of two different initial conditions are that diverging so this is what i mean by diverging very closely spaced initial conditions will slowly diverge away from each other however the so- one if you look at one solution that is not diverging that is stable to a particular uh, particular place that is not going out to infinity that is what i said just now so 
yes it is diverging if we look at different type of trajectories no it is not diverging diverging in a sense that it is not going to infinity uh, it's good that you have so many questions about chaos so i guess the more you learn to apply it uh, more questions will uh, come up so for now this was just a very very popularized talk uh, from sunday we'll start uh, maybe we'll have two courses per week if it is like this like to one and a half hours uh but uh if 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 needed we may have three courses we will we'll see okay i have one more question i have two more question okay that's nice shomodip ghosh is asking can you please post the doi of the paper you mentioned in the talk uh shomodip is is it the robot may paper okay i, I in the whatsapp group are you in the whatsapp group uh kindly join the whatsapp group uh, in the whatsapp group i'll share uh, all the papers which i mentioned the lorenz paper the may paper the mendelbro paper i'll see i'll see and the and the books which you might want to read uh the chaos book by gleek the strogatz book so yeah yeah i'll i'll share those i'll i'll share a drive link perhaps chan be sure same question okay yeah i would onurud is asking the worst question what will be the weekly class timings as i said this will be a very non linear course so on sunday i might have a class uh, at 6 pm uh, or 5:30 just like today so uh, then what i am thinking is i might have a class every 3 days or something like that so it might not be fixed Three days is quite a good time for any assignment which I give. It will be a very small assignment. I completely understand you all have your every other course, and this is just a course you are doing for, like like freelancing. Okay, uh, basically I am freelancing anyway. <clears throat> so I would give small assignments that would take around three days. Try to solve them, and after three days we'll meet. So maybe on Wednesday we'll meet, and then on Saturday we'll meet. It's something like that. Okay. So in in some weekdays you might have a Saturday, may have a Sunday. Let's see what happens. If needs be, then we can meet thrice a week. and as i am hoping we'll need around 24 classes so that might be over by two months if we sometimes do three sometimes do two okay so this is what i wanted to say today so if there are no more questions we can say bye uh let me see let me refer a minute or two okay for next day Uh, i would ask you to have a copy a graph uh, sorry a copy where you are you will be able to draw you don't need graphs and uh, i would ask you to uh, read a bit about if if you have forgotten uh, calculus or algebra just a bit of that very basic like determination the differentiation and integration we won't need much of integration nor would nor would you need much of differentiation we would need a bit of differential equations but however that can be that can be taught very and just just revise a bit on the integral formulas basic integral formulas the trigonometric formulas just the basic things which you study the day before your exams just like that so that's all uh, i think we can close today so if nobody has any more question we are going to say bye very sad that my video is off however it's okay so so let's call it a day thank you bye let's meet in the whatsapp we can talk there okay okay bye